Hello there and welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels for Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. Weather for Long Island for the next couple of days. Today through Thursday, temperatures 45 to 50, nighttime lows 35. There's a good chance of rain today and Thursday, and by Friday, temps won't get out of the mid-30s, nighttime lows about 12. Winter forgot about us for a while, but it'll remember that it's supposed to be here on Friday. Today is National Inventors Day. It's a day that we honor all of those that have made our lives easier, and sometimes, but not always, better. It's also National Don't Cry Over Spilled Milk Day. It's a day that promotes a positive attitude when things might not be going your way. It's a day to look on the bright side of things, or maybe the glass being half full as opposed to half empty. It's National Shut-In Visitation Day. It's a day to serve as a reminder to bring some cheerful company to people who are unable to leave their homes. Visiting somebody who can't leave their home, it makes a more of a positive difference in that person's life. And finally on this day, it's National Make-A-Friend Day, which is a great opportunity to meet somebody new and maybe make a new friendship. I mean, really, after all, friends are one of life's most valuable assets. Okay, and speaking of assets, an asset to my morning is that first cup of coffee, and the second and probably the third as well. Coffee is the drink that most of us start our day with. There's something about it, aside from just the caffeine and get up and go. And yes, a lot of us are hooked on coffee. But I wouldn't worry about it because they keep telling us that coffee is good for us. But there seems to be a little bit of a miscommunication when it comes to ordering coffee. My son and I were passing by a Starbucks, and I sent him in for a coffee for me and whatever he wanted. I told him I'd meet him at the store down the road. I said, get me a regular coffee. And when he came back, I started sipping it and noticed that there was something missing. Actually, there were two things missing. Coffee regular, at least how I learned it, was coffee caffeinated with milk or cream and a sugar or two. This was just black. And I said, what happened to the coffee? And he said, well, you wanted a regular coffee. I said, yeah, but this is not what a regular coffee is. This is a coffee black. If I wanted a coffee black, I would have said... Get me a coffee black, please. He said that he told the person at Starbucks that he wanted a regular coffee, and this is what they gave him. (laughs) So I guess they must be right or not. Now, if I go into my local deli and order a regular coffee, they'll ask me, you want cream and sugar with that? Which means, yeah, I told you a coffee regular, so it should come with the cream and sugar. But they have to verify that I want that stuff in it. But just by saying coffee regular, it tells you what you want. You want some milk or cream, and you want one or two sugars. And on the other hand, coffee black says it all. Coffee black, nothing else. I did a little research on this, and it's really all over the map. It's mostly a New York and Massachusetts thing. Coffee regular means milk and sugar. While other parts of the country, it means just straight up black. Now, when my son went into Starbucks and ordered that coffee regular, I could see why they gave him black coffee. After all, Starbucks is based in Seattle, Washington. So maybe during the training program, they never told the people behind the counter in New York that if someone asks for a regular coffee, they should give it to them with milk and sugar. I'm hoping that Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or any other place that's famous for their coffee hears this episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels and will enlighten their trainees in New York and Massachusetts that if someone orders a regular coffee, you can assume they want milk and sugar. Like I said, black means black regular aha there's something else they want in their coffee they don't want it black (laughs) doesn't it just make common sense i'd like you to try it for yourself sometime wherever you buy your coffee just go in and say i'll have a regular coffee and see what comes out and i'd like to do an informal breakfast with mark daniels poll you can comment on facebook instagram or youtube coffee regular what does it mean love to hear from you so the other day i noticed my phone wasn't working i went to make a call and it was dead Now, this is my house phone. Yes, I still have a house phone. I do remember that my daughter was on the phone talking to her grandmother about an hour before that. So I went to ask her, where's the phone? Did you hang up the phone when you ended the call with your grandmother? And she said to me, what do you mean hang up? Why do you always say hang up the phone? And then I realized we had a generation gap or three between us when it came to terminology. 
So I went on to explain to her that a phone used to come in two parts. There was the receiver and the base. And to end the call, the receiver had to be placed or hung on the base. There was like a hook, thus the term hang up the phone. It's one of those expressions we still use, but is really out of date. So I did a little more research. I love doing research. And I asked her, do you know the term dial the phone? And she said, yeah, but what are we dialing? There's nothing dialing here. It's we're pushing buttons or we're speaking into our phones for the number. Again, and I had explained to her, I had to show her a picture. Oh, look at this. This is a rotary phone. You had to stick your finger in a circular dial with corresponding numbers. And that's how you would dial the number. And I can remember trying to dial really fast sometimes, and I would push the dial in the reverse direction to get it to reset to its original resting position, and it always made it 10 times harder to do. Other terms that kids probably wouldn't understand, you might say, the alarm is ringing. Well, alarms used to have bells to catch your attention. Now they're digital sounds, and there's no bells ringing anywhere. Or how about this one? The cashier's going to ring up your purchase. Once again, Before everything went digital, bells were used, and each time the cashier would pull the lever to get the total, some bell would ring pleasantly, letting you know that your purchase had been totaled. And this is one of my favorites. Roll down the windows or roll up the windows while you're in the car. Your kid decides to open the window and start to hang his head out while you're driving, and you'll always say, roll up the window, because car windows used to have cranks that you turned a couple of times to pull the window down or to push it back up. You rolled the crank around. Here's another one. Sometimes people will tell you, you sound like a broken record. Well, music used to be saved and etched in vinyl discs called records. And if they were broken, they'd repeat the same split seconds over and over again. Hence the term broken record. And here's one I just learned. Why is it called luggage? Well, bags weren't always convenient or easy enough to carry around. They didn't have the wheels and those telescoping handles. Sometimes you had to literally lug your stuff around. Thus, the term luggage. And something else related to records. On the flip side, there was another side to a record, which is something that kids won't experience, but they use this term anyway without understanding where it comes from. Other common expressions that kids use and may not know their origin, stay tuned, start with a clean slate, ditto, and blowing off steam. I'm sure I missed a bunch, so if you have an expression that we use today that kids don't understand, you could comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And finally, I wanted to ask you if you've ever bought anything from a TV commercial that has like a 1-800 number. Call now. We'll even throw in the free shipping. You know what I'm talking about. These are those as-seen-on-TV products. There was something that I saw on TV a while ago, and I still haven't bought it. It was something called Grease Police. Don't ask me why, but this stuff looked like it knocked through grease with ease, and it made cleaning your oven, a countertop, a cabinet, whatever it might be, easier than ever. And I really wanted to buy it. This commercial played over and over again, and it really sucked me in. Because I like a clean oven and a clean house, and I thought this stuff would make cleaning that much easier. It really had me hooked. Now, these are the products where they'll tell you it's $19.99, and then they'll say, but for a limited time only, for the next 100 callers, we'll throw in two for the price of one. You know the type of stuff I'm talking about. I guess when they start telling you you can get two for the price of one, that may be a signal that maybe this just isn't good, I I guess. For instance, I bought my friend Jamie egglets for her birthday because she really wanted them. I'd see them on TV, we'd talk about them, and she had to have them. So I bought them for her birthday. Not as good as seen on TV. This was a device to make making hard-boiled eggs easier. But if you think about it, what's easier than making hard-boiled eggs? There's just something about seeing a product that is hyped over and over on TV and the price and the free shipping and that kind of stuff that gets you hooked. So I went online and I Googled Grease Police and there were demonstrations with the product that didn't show that it performed as well as promised. And that was a big letdown for me because I really wanted my Grease Police. 
Now, the demonstration might not have been too accurate, and maybe the stuff really does work as well. But then it just sent a big caution flag up in the air. Do I really want to spend nineteen ninety nine for two Greece police with free shipping, and it doesn't work? But here I was, hooked on a product that I thought was going to save the day when it comes to greasy cleaning. And I don't know how I got hooked on it in the first place. It just looked so good. I can't say that it does or doesn't work because I never bought it. And I was a little surprised at myself because my kids would see stuff on TV, call 1-800, blah, 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 to get some toy that they'd seen run over and over and over again in some episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. And I'd always turn to them and say, no, I don't think so. But here I was telling myself, hmm, I don't think so. So have you ever bought any of those products as seen on TV? Have you ever been hooked on something you really wanted because they ran those commercials, they gave you free shipping, not only that, they're going to make it two for the price of one? What did you fall for? You could comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. That'll do it for today's episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Thanks for listening. Breakfast with Mark Daniels is available everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Alexa, YouTube, and buzzsprout.com. Just search Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Email me anytime, breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com. Have yourself a great Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Breakfast with Mark Daniels.